Welcome to the Fantasy Football Brothers Podcast. This is week 6, 2021. We're recapping Thursday night's game, going over fantasy news and players to watch headed into the weekend matchups. I'm here with my brother Carson. My name is Blake. How are you doing today? I'm so excited for this. Yeah. I didn't watch this game, but I'm, I, am I analyzing these stats, the box score? I saw highlights, you know, on social media, but um, did you watch the game last night, like live? Naturally, yes. Naturally. Yes. Okay. Well, that's where we differ. If I had the time, I probably wouldn't have done it, but I just love fantasy, so <laughs> I seem like a very credible host, but uh, I mean, I'm ready for whatever uh, you bring into the show today. Yeah, so let's, uh, let's dive straight into the box score. And, well, first of all, did the outcome surprise you? Um, not really. I was I was keeping track of the game on the fantasy app, and I will say that I was surprised that it ended up being as close as it was because it looked like the Buccaneers were like pretty safely ahead at one point, um, but then that kind of turned around. Um, is that how you felt the game went as well? Uh, yeah, from watching the game, I could say that uh, the Buccaneers were really never at risk of uh, losing this one. Yeah. It was pretty much just the Eagles trying to play catch up the whole way through. Yeah. Um, and that doesn't surprise me. Uh, what did surprise me a little bit was the, uh, well, how about the performance from Leonard Fournette? No kidding. 22 carries? Like, I mean, I already knew that he was taking up the run, uh, taking over the run game from Ronald Jones, but, like, Brady only had one less carry than Ronald Jones. That shows you how bad it is for Ronald Jones and why, I guess, Leonard Fournette, they're trusting him. I don't know why you call him Uncle Lenny, but uh, they're trusting Uncle Lenny. <laughs> and it's not even close. Yeah, and, and for context, Brady's four rushing attempts were a QB sneak to get the first, and then the three kneels that followed that. I was going uh, to say, four carries for one yard. He seems a little inefficient. <laughs> yeah, quarter of a yard each attempt. Yeah, um, and also something that was interesting to me as I was looking at this is the six receptions from Leonard Fournette as well. He had more receptions and targets than Godwin and Mike Evans. As, how, what does that make you feel like wh- how about this offense? Well, I think that, you know, Evans has these games where he, he's kind of a touchdown, uh, like a touchdown monster in that offense. Like he can either yes. he can either really show up and grab you two or three touchdowns um, or he can kind of ha- he can kind of disappear and have very few catches like he did last or the other night. So I think that uh, from that perspective, that's kind of on brand for Mike Evans, but um, kind of a disappointing outing from uh, Godwin. Agreed. Uh, and certainly someone who rosters him, I was not happy to watch uh, Antonio Brown get all of the looks again for a consecutive week. Yeah, do you think that, like, in future weeks, like, Brown... I mean, they're all must-starts, and that's what's kind of annoying, because, like, they will all pop off at some point. But they, like, Mike Evans has these games, as you said... Chris Godwin sometimes has them, but not as often. But Antonio Brown, I mean, I know that he hasn't been doing this every single week, but this is back-to-back weeks. Do you think this is, like, more to come from him? Or do you think, like, uh, one of them will always just be leading over the other two? Well, I think that's probably going to be the case in terms of one player always having a better week above the others. But there's really no guarantee of who it will be week to week. Um, And... You have to also keep in mind that Tom Brady's relationship with Antonio Brown, they've got a pretty tight yeah. uh, friendship. And so I think that that helps in how Brady approaches the offense. But, you know, Brady Brady moves the ball around. There were a lot of players in this game that, that registered catch. Yeah. So it's not it's not as though he's force feeding Antonio Brown or anyone it, else for that matter. Exactly. Speaking of that, um, I saw online that this was Brady's first uh, 40 plus passing attempt game with 80% completion rate. And I thought that was interesting. So he definitely was, yeah, his first time to have over 40 attempts and 80% completion rate. Interesting. Yeah. I thought that was unique. Um, I mean, he probably, that's just, that's a lot of passing attempts for any quarterback. And I mean, it's just, he's having like a career season. I don't know if this was, uh, counting, last night's stats or just before that but i read that he was on track for like 51 passing touchdowns and over 6,000 passing yards yeah that's what i was about to say um and i think he could have gotten quite a few more yards if uh fournette hadn't had such a an effective night on the ground 
Yeah, definitely. I think, like, fantasy-wise, this looks like Brady didn't have an amazing day, but he's just playing very, very well. Yeah, very, very high-level football. Um, and you're, you're not you're not upset with the production, although it is under-projected uh, finals. Under yeah, I'll credit. say especially in a six uh, TD or six point TD passing league. I mean, you'd probably be more disappointed in a four point, but I mean, he still had a good game. Yeah, um, I think eighteen eighteen point nine in in standard scoring. So, you know, nothing terrible. Um, yeah. Certainly less than you were hoping for, but uh, you'll take it. I think. I mean, definitely. Yeah. <laughs> Do you want to move on to the Eagles? Yeah, let's talk about let's talk about your boy Jalen Hurts, how he did. <laughs> okay, first off, he's not my boy. I, I'm kind of a Jalen Hurts hater. I mean, okay, I, I think we said that last episode, but um, I don't know. I just don't really buy him as a fantasy player, but I know he's productive, and I just saw something, <laughs> like, again, on Instagram or whatever, just pointing out how he did not look good at all, but he was racking in the fantasy points just because of, like, the two rushing touchdowns yeah that's what kind of what we said um in the earlier episode this week that uh you know it doesn't really matter how he gets it if he gets the points he's putting up points he's creating a floor for himself that fantasy managers can rely on um against the tough bucks defense in terms of rushing the ball he still had you know his scrambles yeah i mean he's not lamar jackson but he's making the other running backs feel like baltimore running backs at this point and i think that's very scary <laughs> for miles sanders owners so well i i will i will uh mention although sanders did again get single digit rushing attempts yeah um he had several and they came late in the they came in the fourth quarter but he had several uh, plays, several rushes that kind of brought his total up to where it was. Yes. Um, that allowed the Eagles to get into scoring position and to get their final touchdown. Um, but yeah, nine nine carries is. I mean, that's that is not RB one numbers, not even close. No, not even close. And I did. I also saw something that like his second half uh, average yards per rush was very high. Do you think that like him having a good second half will be make them rethink how they use him, or is he just kind of, I mean, not really worth starting until he really, really proves himself? Uh, I think you got to keep him at flex, but I don't know with how you with where you drafted him. Yeah, I know. If you have better options right now, I mean, there are some waiver wire uh, players like a Daryl Williams or a yeah. Devontae Booker uh, this week that might perform better than uh than sanders hopefully for managers out there but um i think the idea i mean you, i don't think you can bench him considering where you drafted him necessarily it's difficult because running back is so uh shallow yeah, agreed i mean going into drafts this year miles sanders and deandre swift were two players i thought were very uh too high for where they i think they should be and DeAndre Swift has, you know, kind of lucked out as far as how his fantasy projection has been. But as I said last episode, I'm st- I still don't buy it just because it's a weird offense, but his receptions keep his floor. And But then, you know, you get Miles Sanders. I mean, four targets is not bad, but two for 10 yards like that. He's not getting much out of that either. So, but this, I, looking at this, this is a really weird distribution of receiving stats. And this can kind of segue uh, uh, us into some news. Like, the player that had the most receptions was Zach Ertz. Yep, and now he's gone. Now he's gone. <laughs> uh, Off to Arizona. And I pulled up Arizona's tight ends just because I was curious. And their best one, as far as roster percentage, is rostered in 2.2% of leagues. Is that Max Williams? It is. Yeah, so he's hurt. I don't, I think he's I think he's done for the season. Is that correct? I'm um, not, I can read it I'm real not quick. Up to date on that. Uh, either Post. way, yeah, I'll kind of fill the void while you look that up. Um, Zach Ertz. Uh, so in leagues that use the tight end, I think that obviously Zach Ertz historically has been a great tight end. I think that moving to Arizona is good for him. Um, I think it can be problematic for some of those. Uh, kind of more questionable wide receivers that we referenced in the last show you know your aj greens your rondell moores Mm -hmm. uh, and uh christian kirk those guys might suffer from this i'm not too worried about this affecting deandre hopkins too much um but ultimately i think it's a i think it's a move off uh from arizona 
uh, of a team that's trying to make a Super Bowl push, you know? Yes, undefeated. Um, do you know, was Goddard injured last night? Um, he was he was on the COVID list. Okay. I will say yeah. this really helps his value on this team. Um, yes, moving forward, it, this is a trade that benefits both tight ends um, yes. because they have, you know, they have an independent role now in those yeah. offenses. And then for Max Williams, I just pulled it up. As of Wednesday, the Cardinals have not confirmed that season ending, but multiple reports say that it's a torn ligament in his knee. So it probably is, is what okay. I'm gathering I believe, from Yeah, this. I believe that would, that would motivate the trade um, additionally. Agreed. Yeah, so we'll see. I mean, I don't I think he was he was picked up in our league uh, prior to Thursday night's game. Huh, interesting. Um, but in leagues that use a tight end, I think you know they're in a he's in a high powered offense and he's in an offense that throws a lot. So I think that there's good opportunities for him in the future. Yeah, I I think he's worth a pickup in leagues that have tight ends. I mean he he went from being like the undisputed. Uh, top three top two tight end i guess just behind kelsey but I, I feel like there's even a point in time you could argue he was good as him so his like descent was so rapid that i almost don't buy it so i could see him being not back up to that level but definitely better than he has been like the past two seasons for the eagles yeah i think it's very similar to the hunter henry uh johnny smith situation where both guys are going to kind of impede on one another uh thriving yes so I think with those two guys on separate offenses, they're going to have the opportunities to uh, be more consistent for fantasy managers out there. All right. Is that all we have for this game, or we just want to move on to news now? Yeah, I think we can move on. I mean, I, I, I would say that uh, Devontae Smith, I mean, it was, just a, oh, yes. it was just a rough night. It was a rough night passing the ball for Jalen Hurts. Uh, 12 for 26 for 115 yards like that's yeah, those are that's really low numbers really bad yeah and I I on one team I had Antonio Brown and Devonta Smith and I when I just saw the total points I was like oh so they're both doing decent but no that was not the case <laughs> yeah. AB carried that, that that matchup definitely um, but yeah I mean Devonta Smith moving forward I think he's still flex worthy it's just it was a tough game and and Jalen Hurts really struggled to move the ball through the air. Which is um, kind of surprising with, you know, the strengths of the Buccaneers' defense, wouldn't, wouldn't you say? Yeah, I, I mean, in, in, in truth, I think that the score was a little misleading because, I, like I said, I think the Buccaneers kind of won that game handily and didn't have many uh, opportunities to feel the pressure from the Eagles' offense. Yes. So, yeah, I think that... You know, Jalen Hurts gets it done. You may not like how it uh, how he gets it done, but he does. And mm-hmm. for that reason, he's going to continue to be a starter. And I think that, you know, if you're going to avoid a player in this offense, probably Miles Sanders. Yeah, as far as, like, a person that's rostered and close to every league. Yeah, exactly. All right, so now we're going to move on to just – general fantasy news players to watch going into the sunday matchups and monday matchups um and let's start with a big name christian mccaffrey ruled out in advance of his game for sunday that was very surprising to me um because i thought that it was trending towards him having a chance to play this weekend and then they roll him out two days prior like, I thought at, at worst it was going to be a game-time decision from what I thought I saw from this week. I could have been mixing him up with a different player, but I just was a little surprised whenever I saw that notification. Yeah, so I think that with the NFL season extending by a game, um, mm-hmm. that teams are going to be a little bit more cautious about bringing players back too quickly. Um, I think that, you know, Chuba Hubbard has been good. I think uh, the Panthers are, what, 1-1 one and one in McCaffrey's absence? Yeah, I think that's correct. I think last week was their first loss. Yeah, so Chuba Hubbard is still doing a decent job, and we covered this in the last show, but for Mm -hmm. those of you just tuning in for this being your first time, um, Christian McCaffrey obviously is a player on an elite tier that very few attain. Mm -hmm. Uh, So naturally, Chuba Hubbard is not a one-to-one replacement, unlike Alexander Madison, perhaps. (laughs) Yes. (laughs) <laughs> but um 
yeah, the reality is that they're probably just not wanting to rush him back um, and make sure that he's 100%. Uh, do you know off the top of your head when their bye week is? The Panthers? I can check real quick. Yeah, so either way, I don't think it. I don't think McCaffrey necessarily gets held out until that point because that actually, yeah. I think they're week fourteen. They're week thirteen. Yeah, he definitely doesn't 13. get held out yeah, till yeah. then. But um, <laughs> yeah, so but I agree. Way. There's no reason to rush him back in just from their own perspective. Yeah, it's a long season. Yeah, especially with how last season went. Like I, he it was like he had one game in the beginning, one game in the middle. One game in the end. It's like they, they probably rushed him back too quick, and that was, or he just got re-injured. I don't know the circumstances, but they're probably being cautious because of how that happened, too. Yeah, possibly. So let's move on to another big name. Nick Chubb, out for Sunday. <laughs> that was surprising to me, too. Was that just something he picked up this week in practice, or was that from the game? So it's my understanding that um, Kareem Hunt and Nick Chubb didn't practice all week until Chubb was out today and Hunt was back in practice. And so something is happening where Chubb is not progressing how they're wanting him to. And so he's been ruled out in advance of the game. And so it's going to be Kareem Hunt's backfield to play with. That should be interesting. And might make for a sell high opportunity next week for you having Kareem Hunt. I will say that I just read that they're facing the Broncos next Thursday, so maybe that had something to do with it. They just knew that it was going to be a quick turnaround anyways, but um, yeah, it's kind of surprising to me on that one too. Yeah, that could make sense. I think that, um, I mean, obviously we've seen how Hunt has performed so far, and with uh, Chubb has been great too, but the like I said before, you know, it's a long season and these players need to be able to be available to these teams. Like the Browns have a chance at least to making the playoffs. They're yes. have a winning record at the moment. And, uh, with Jarvis Landry and other players kind of battling through injuries and all that, it's, uh, you gotta, you gotta play it safe sometimes. I mean, if you're a team that has Kareem Hunt as your RB two, why would you rush Chubb back into it? Agreed. Yeah. All right, let's see. What else we got? Um, okay, Dalvin Cook, Adam Thielen, and Justin Jefferson all off of the injury report for Sunday, so that's good news. That for, makes me happy. Yes, that's good news. Um, probably Alexander Madison's value. I mean, for people who don't roster uh, Cook going into this week, it's probably still a player you're interested in acquiring. Yeah, if you don't roster Cook, I mean, definitely don't drop Madison, but, I mean, I definitely think you should try to trade him to whoever has Cook because he has proven himself, and I feel like that manager would see his value. It's at least worth a try. Um, and then if you have him and you have Cook, you're obviously keeping him. Yeah, I agree with that. Uh, let's see. Uh, Xavier Howard and Devontae Parker have been ruled out for the Dolphins against the Jaguars, and Tua should be back. So what does that mean for Jaguars pass catchers? I mean, I guess it's better, right? I mean, uh, I'm not the big defense guy, but I already I know that they have a very strong secondary, so just losing a player like that is going to be good for the Jaguars. I'll, I'll be interested to see how, uh, I mean, I guess Marvin Jones and Chenault do and Trevor Lawrence. Um, how's Trevor Lawrence? I mean, he's he's. Let's see. I'm trying to look it up. Okay, so he's he's improved his interception streak. He started the first three games with seven interceptions combined, and then he had zero and four and one and five. So I'm curious to see if like he's gonna get more efficient uh, because he's only had one game over 300 passing yards. So. You would have thought that Miami's secondary was not the team to do it against, but maybe he has a chance now. Yeah, Xavier Howard's, I think, definitely their best corner. Um, but also with Devontae Parker out for another week, it could be, you know, on the offensive end, unless unless Miles Gaskin just proves us all wrong and does it back-to-back yes. -back weeks. <laughs> just becomes a wide um, receiver. <laughs> yeah, they could be struggling to move the ball. Tua being back will help. Um 
But yeah, I'll, I'll be interested to see how those uh, Jacksonville pass catchers. Yeah, because without Parker, I mean, they have Waddle and, like, who else? <laughs> Honestly, because Fuller's still out. Gasicki, yeah. Oh, yeah, there you go. Yeah, so it's not looking too great. That That's a, that's a, not a very <laughs> high-stakes matchup in London. <laughs> Feel bad for the Brits on that one. I don't know, but it could be it could be more interesting because they're you know somewhat equally matched because of what they're both going through. Yeah, very possible. Um, okay, here's one. Mike Williams was not at practice. Um, oh yes, that's interesting. Um, I mean, I don't know what it changes too much because Keenan Allen is still a must start. Um. So, I mean, that's really the only repercussion. I mean, d- didn't we say that uh, Jared Cook had one reception last week? So if Mike Evans out, that's definitely going to be an uptick in production for him. Yeah, Mike um, Williams, yeah. I don't know if it hurts Herbert too much because he seems legit, as we deduced from his stats last week. Um, I mean, obviously it hurts, but I think he'll be fine too. So... Yeah, I mean, I don't think it, they have plenty of options. I still think. I mean, Eckler, obviously, a big pass catcher for them too, even at the running back role. So they'll probably be fine. But that's disappointing for. I mean, I would say the best breakout wide receiver this season. Would you say? Oh, definitely. With with how with where he was drafted, and uh, how he's performed so far, he is definitely probably the lottery ticket that on a lot of drafting on a lot of teams. Agreed. Um, Joe Mixon is returning, and according to the coach, he's going to be getting his full regular workload. Yes, I read that, and um, I mean, I guess that's good. I think that's, I'm a little surprised, I guess, because, that they're just saying that, because, I mean, he was game time decision last week, and they limited his carries, probably, you know, less than half it, that he would have had because he only had 10 and he's usually good for 20 plus so i mean in the span of the week i guess i can see that happening but he's just showing us confidence i don't know if maybe that has to do with how ambiguous they were at the end of last season with his injuries that they're just gonna be like clear and say he's good i don't know if that has anything to do with it but um i mean that's definitely reassuring for mixing owners yeah i agree uh, another one, Chris Carson out for the Sunday Night Primetime matchup. Yeah, and I saw that you said that Pete Carroll is considering well, putting Carroll him on said, IR. Yeah, oh, Pete yeah, Carroll it, said that they're yes. considering placing him on IR um, after Wilson was just placed on IR this afternoon as well. I just find that, I mean, he was a game-time decision last Thursday, so he had a longer week of recovery, and then they're ruling him out two days before this time. Yeah, that's that's not... That's not reassuring at all. Um, I feel like, you know, I'm glad I got Cook in a trade that I had last week, but most people, I would say, Carson's probably your RB2, and that probably makes you nervous unless you, you know, got lucky with one of your other people. But if not, then you're ha- you're having to play a running back that you're not confident in because I just think that's how your roster structure would be if you have Carson. So, yeah, that's definitely makes me nervous for yeah. people that have them that have him yeah, definitely concerning to see that they're considering uh having him miss an additional three games on top of this one yeah um daniel jones not on the final injury report which probably means for certain that uh mike glennon will not be seeing the field at least to start the game yeah that, good that's that that's good offense. for them yes for sure and what's the are there any updates or injury designations for their wide receivers i'm not sure on that um so kenny galladay has been ruled out in yes. advance but uh darius slayton and Kadarius tony are both questionable um i'm not it's, seeing anything about sterling Shepard. yeah i ha- on the fantasy app he's listed as healthy so okay yeah so he's good so they'll have most of their weapons it looks like besides uh saquon yeah so that should be interesting uh, do you think that for people hoping a big week for Devonte booker do you think that hurts him at all or he'll still be like good for at least solid flex numbers yeah i'm not too worried about uh Devontae booker in the offense i think that you know he's gonna he's in position to get a lot of volume with saquon barkley out 
And with Daniel Jones there, obviously he's going to lose out on some on some rushing attempts from him because Daniel Jones has uh, designed runs in that mm-hmm. offense. Um, much less so than Mike Lennon, I'm sure. <laughs> but I think overall, you know, when the offense is moving down the field more efficiently, which should be the case with uh, Daniel Jones under center, uh, Devontae Booker will have some opportunities in the red zone, I think. Uh, even though the Rams are a tough defense, uh, I still would not feel worried about starting Devontae Booker at flex or maybe even RB2. Yeah, I feel like he is a very safe floor for what he's filling in for. Because, I mean, that, that I mean you just see offenses that have those type of running backs, and that's why their handcuffs are so valuable, because they're just in a good system to fill in for. Yeah, agreed. Um, and then I think probably one of the last things we'll cover is DK Metcalf has a foot designation... But, uh, or let me, let me rephrase that. DK Metcalf has had his foot be an issue through practice this week, but no injury designation going into the game. So he's expected to play. Does that concern you at all, considering, um, what's his name? I'm drawing a blank. Oh, the quarterback. Oh, Russell Wilson? No. Oh, the replacement, Geno Smith? Yeah, Geno. Yeah. How are you feeling about Geno Smith being in that offense? Um, I mean, it makes you nervous that they're just getting, you know, injury designations all over the place. And even though he doesn't have one, he's still not even in the clear, honestly, at least for the potential of free injury. But, uh, I mean, I think he'll be fine. He filled in fine for Wilson. I don't think it hurts Metcalf or Lockett. Lockett's fine, right? He's cleared. He's healthy. Yeah. Um, but you know, no Carson, but it's not like he has a big role in the passing game. So I think they'll be fine. Okay, cool. Um, well, this was kind of a impromptu, you know, kind of compilation of news and reviewing stuff, recapping. So, uh, we'll try to get a, a method down in the future, but hope you guys enjoyed listening to this Thursday night football recap and, players to watch into the Sunday matchups. So uh, my name is Blake and I'm here with my brother Carson. Thank you guys for listening. Thank you for listening and we'll see you next week. Bye-bye.